The next case, I don't know if I have time, I do. Uh, let me see if I can pick, quickly finish off with this and then take the questions. So we had a 45 year old male. Um, so who was a known case of diabetes? I hope I'm audible. Yeah. Uh, yes, doctor, you are. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so 45 year old man who was a diabetic, hypertensive and known coronary artery disease and he had severe LV dysfunction. So he had a EFF only 30. Two days of fever, loose stools, 20 episodes. So large volume, watery, and he had vomited four, five times. He had presented to the ED with these symptoms. So his airway was patent. He was tachypneic. His peripheries were warm, but uh, his blood pressure was 30, 70 over 30. He was started on NORAD and his heart rate was 140. He was mounting a proper tachycardia. Abdomen was a bit tender in the epigastrium and he was pyrexial at 101. So that is uh, a really terrible gas. You can see that he had pH of uh, 6.83, but it's a mixed esclosis. The guy had... PCO2 of 82 and a PO2 of 111. He had a base deficit of minus 20. So, and, and he had a lactate of 15.54. So enough reasons for you to believe that this guy is in shock and is very terribly underperfused. His creat is 1.89. He has developed a AKI2, possibly a pre-renal AKI. So now, urine dip showed large ketones and the sugars are 553. So now is this chap having a DKA or is he having a hypovolemic shock and why is his CO2 up? Yeah, so this was a difficult situation. But as he had profound acidosis and he was retaining CO2 and he had refractory shock, we decided to intubate him. So he had 1,000 mils of fluid bolus first. Even before tube, you have to optimize. You will crash him and kill him if you don't optimize him a bit before you intubate this patient. So he had one liter of saline and his hyperkalemia was corrected. So you can see that the potassium was 7.7. .7. With that acidosis, that is really dangerous. He can have a an arrhythmia which would kill. So he was given calcium gluconate, he was given actraprid, and he was uh, subsequently intubated with ketamine and rock. He kept having push doses of phenylephrine. So uh, like I said, it's a short-acting alpha agonist. So he, he was on it, but for me to even safely intubate him, I had to give him some phenylephrine. His BP, despite all of these measures, was only... 80-40, yeah. So he had blood cultures, IV antibiotics. So he had fluids as per the DKA protocol, but the guy was still hypotensive. He had a C-line. He was started on vasopressin and adrenaline. So this guy was really sick. He had bicarb because, like I say, acidosis and hyperkalemia in a shocked patient with the hyperkalemia and the AKI, bicarb is indicated, not routinely. You don't give bicarb for all acidosis. You don't give bicarb for all DKAs or, or even if the acidosis is severe. So, but if they have hyperkalemia and renal impairment, then it is dangerous. Then you might want to consider giving bicarb. But before giving bicarb, the, the bicarbonate that you infuse is, go, is a hypertonic solution. It's going to uh, it may worsen intracellular acidosis and it's going to give out, it's going to, the breakdown of the bicarb is going to give out a lot of CO2. So you should ideally have the patient intubated before you give bicarb. Yeah. And this guy had refractory shock, shock that was refractory to fluids, pressors, adrenaline. Um, so we did have to consider giving him a touch of hydrocortisone as well. So the evidence for hydrocortisone is weaker but we did give him a, give it as an infusion. So 200 over. Um, so, so he had 200 as a bolus and subsequently we were thinking about giving him an 
इन्फ्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोकार